Okay, this is the Digitran Light record screen, and this is what we call the numeric keypad up here to the upper right and to the lower right. This is the seating chart. These are mechanisms for marking during takedown. I'm going to go ahead and do a demonstration of that. And so I'm going to turn on the recording that I'm going to uh, pretend is my live audio. And then I'm going to turn on Digitran Light. Two voice testimony at 180 words per minute. I am the questioner. I am the witness. Ready. Following your meeting with the superintendent for Howard Construction, what happened next? The superintendent and I left the construction trailer, and I told him that I needed to meet with the supervisor for best construction. Did you subsequently meet with that supervisor? As we were walking around the north side of the building, we encountered Mr. Martin. Was it your understanding that Mr. Martin was the supervisor for best construction on that site? Yes, he was. Do you recall his first name? As I recall, his first name was Michael. What happened next? I verified with Mr. Martin that it was his employee that had been working on the scaffolding. Did you show Mr. Martin the photographs you had taken? We stepped just inside the building, away from the sunlight, where we could see them. Did he seem surprised by the photographs? No, he did not. Did he make any comments regarding the activity depicted in the photographs? He stated he knew they were not supposed to use the cross braces and guardrails for access to upper levels of the scaffolding. Did Mr. Martin actually see the fall? He stated he was around the back of the building when the fall occurred. So he did not see it? That's correct. Inspector Maynard, when did you take your photographs? During the course of my investigation, perhaps two hours after the accident. Had any best construction workers resumed work when you took the photographs? No, sir. Well. Who is the person depicted in Exhibit 3? That is an employee of Best Construction by the name of Robert Jackson. What is he doing in that photograph? He is climbing the scaffolding to access the roof. Is he utilizing the ladder? No, he is not. What is he doing, if you know? He is using the cross braces and guardrails to climb onto the roof. Well, if the employees had not resumed work, what was Mr. Jackson doing? When he came back down, he stated he had climbed the scaffold to the roof in order to retrieve his tool belt, which he had left up there. What about the other best construction employees? Could you clarify the question? At the time you took the photographs of Mr. Jackson climbing the scaffolding, what were the other best employees doing? They were standing around on the pavement surrounding the building. What did they do after Mr. Jackson returned to the ground? All of the best construction employees were dismissed from work for the remainder of the day. After you showed him the photographs, did Mr. Martin indicate whether he had ever observed such a thing before? I asked him if it was the standard practice of best construction to allow the employees to use the guardrails to access upper levels. And how did he respond? He stated they do not allow them to. However, the employees do it from time to time. Like twice in one day? I guess so. Inspector Maynard, did Mr. Martin indicate whether any employee had ever been disciplined for using the guardrails or failing to use the ladder to access various levels of the scaffold? He did not. Now, on the day in question, Mr. Hernandez fell from the top level of the scaffolding, is that correct? No, he fell from the edge of the roof. Was the edge of the roof level with the top level of the scaffolding? No, sir. Why not? Because the regulations governing scaffold construction require the scaffold to be three feet higher than the leading edge of the roof. Do you recall the distance from the ground to the highest level of scaffolding? I would estimate it was 25 to 30 feet. Do you recall how many stories the building was that the scaffolding was next to? At that point in time, it was three stories. So the roof of the building next to the scaffolding was three stories high? That's correct. Did Mr. Martin indicate to you what the company policy was for accessing the roof and upper level of the scaffolding? Yes, he did. Can you describe that process for us? The employee should go into the building, climb several flights of stairs, and access the roof. Exactly how would he access the roof? There is a roof access with another ladder that looks similar to the one on the scaffolding, and you crawl up through a hatch to gain access to the roof. 
Does the photograph in Exhibit 3 illustrate the employee accessing the roof in the specific manner you have described? No, it does not. Why not? Mr. Jackson is accessing the roof by climbing the cross braces and guardrails of the scaffolding rather than coming onto the roof through the hatch. When Mr. Hernandez fell, was he attempting to access the roof? According to the witnesses, that is what he was doing. And was Mr. Hernandez accessing the roof in the manner you described as best construction policy? No, he was not. What was he doing? Mr. Hernandez was attempting to access the roof by climbing the cross braces and guardrails of the scaffolding rather than coming up through the hatch. Can you describe what happened when he attempted that? Well, according to eyewitness statements, as he stepped onto one of the cross braces or guardrails, his ankle twisted. What was the result of that twisting? When his ankle twisted, stop. Okay, so now we can stop the recording. Or we can leave it recording. And I'm going to demonstrate a readback. We're going to read back from the room. So I'm going to do F8 to go up. F9 goes down.